morning guys got a little project here I thought I'd do a video on um, this is my 2004 Honda Rancher AT GPS scape four-wheel drive it's a it's a 400 um, it's got about I think I had like 2,500 hours on it let me show you what's going on here um, let's see what we got here uh, trip odometer mode two three seven three miles and everything is working on it um what happens is the battery keeps going dead and i thought there was a draw on it but every time i want to ride it i got to jump start it or charge it and so what i did you would take a walk around here there's no damage on this um the only damage when i bought it i saw was if you can see the edge of the rims I have a little ding in them like somebody hit rocks or whatever there's something here see that but these are the original tires original everything is what the owner told me and um, they bought it new and I got a good price on it I was doing some work for them and they said it had an issue where it wouldn't start and then it wouldn't move and it was leaking gas and so they didn't ride it um, what I did is I added this winch up here because I bought a $75 snow plow I put on here to plow the drive and it works okay. Um, but anyways, the problem here is, uh, you know, battery electrical. So what I did is I put this little Craftsman, I think it's a two amp. I don't know, it's a maintainer, two amp. And I put it on the battery and this is actually a used battery I took out of another one that tested good at the time. But it doesn't test good now. With it plugged in overnight, it started. You just saw it had some power. But it lit up and said bad battery. So I don't know. Maybe it's got a bad cell. And let's see if it starts. Let's see here. It does. See how nice it runs? And it cranked over pretty fast. But let's check this uh, over to make sure it's a battery. Because because it said bad battery, and I think the battery in it's over five years old, I bought another battery. They're quite reasonable online. The little squirrel's out here. Can you hear him purr? <laughs> He's the loudest purr ever. Sounds like a little chainsaw. But uh, he loves it outdoors when it's nice, and he likes to come out and hunt, don't you? Look at him. Weirdo. But he's a big kitty. I mean, he likes to eat, doesn't he? Yeah. Um, so, Dawson, if you watch his channel, he's got a new-to-him wheeler. This is a 2004, and he bought a 2009. So he's five years newer and almost double the power. Probably a little too much bike for him. I hope he rides it safe. This one is in pretty good shape but what i wanted to start off with is take this thing off and let it charge overnight and we'll pull these little clips see the squirrel he's out hunting already he's going to take off to the woods he'll come back with a little mouse or something all right but see, as you can see the condition here it looks pretty good this is a little uh i don't know what you call it little circuit breaker thing for this remote the winch is a remote control Harbor Freight one. Um, I bought a uh, Chinese carburetor for it for like cheap. I don't remember how much. 20, 30 bucks. Wasn't much. The carburetor, I still have the Honda carburetor, but it was leaking right out the bowl. And I didn't feel like buying a rebuild kit at the time. I just bought this, put it on. Boom, I was riding it. Um, but I want to keep the original. I'll just test this battery out. So I brought a that little tester I want to see what voltage we got so we'll put it on the 20 volt scale Let's see what we got here because this charged overnight it should be a uh, 12 volt battery should be about 12 6 or a little higher yeah see I think we got a bad battery charging all night 12.3 is too low it's probably got a bad cell in it so I brought out a number two and a number three screwdriver, probably a three fits these, and 
the battery I bought looks a little bigger than this. It says it fits this model, but let's see if it does. All right, online it was a BA-152. It's a, I think a Caldrick, is it? Um, it's an AGM battery, and they're supposed to be better. Looks about the same size. Oh, it's heavy as crap. And what I wanted to get was the most economical battery with the most power. And this is 12 volt, 12 amp hour, cold cranking amps of 200. 200 is not very much, but if the machine runs good, you know, you don't need it. BA-152 Caldrick. And uh, I put a date on there. I opened it last night, but I wasn't near the machine. So... I didn't know if it was the right size, but it looks the same. Negative is over here, positive over there. Boy, it looks exactly the same. So let's take that out. This come with new bolt and nut kit. Looks like stainless steel, which is nice. But let's see if the number, yeah, number three fits it. So my memory is great, right? This goes to the winch. So always disconnect your negative first and I wanted to hook the ground right to the battery instead of the frame see if I can put these where I won't lose them this way you won't get any sparks otherwise you should pull your fuses first and then and they're in here this had a strap on it originally yeah it hooks way down there you really got to stretch it now we'll do the positive Oh, it's a beautiful day today. Doss and I were on a job yesterday. You'll see the video coming out. And we put in a sliding patio door after we did a lot of fixing. And it's not complete yet, but it's the weekend. And I said, I'm done. That was hot and heavy. Um, oh, this is a, looks like a Walmart battery, an Everstart. So I don't know how old this is. We'll check it. I got Dawson out here. He might be able to help me if he wants to hold this aside for me. See if we can get this up out of here without wrecking the joint. Um, yeah, they're pretty heavy for a little baby battery. And we'll compare things here. So it looks exactly the same. The height is the same. And this is a this is an AGM Power Sport ES. TX14. Um, I don't recall if I bought this new for his go kart or not. I don't remember where this come from. I don't see a date on it. Always date your batteries, guys. It's hard to remember. So while we're right here, let's check this again. And I believe it was around 12.32. We got 12.3233, and over here we've got, and I didn't charge this or nothing, 12.7, can you read that Dawson? My gauge is getting a little bit scratchy there. It is 12.7 something. something. So that's definitely over 12 and a half volts. So that tells me that is a good battery. But this one being charged all night should be full, and it's not. So... That nut fell off down in here. There we go. Get this aside. And then, like I said, I put a date on here, so I'll remember next time. And we'll set this baby down in there. There's a little dirt in there. Negative on that side. If Dawson could hold them wires over. All these guys. Yeah. And then... See, I got to get this going because Dawson's got a set of wheels now and he wants to ride and this thing doesn't start and it's annoying and if we go riding somewhere and I shut it off, I'm a little concerned if it's going to start. So the uh, battery's pretty important to me. I don't want to carry a jump pack with me and see if it's going to fit down in there. Uh, this should give you another square inch of room. All right, see how hard you gotta stretch this thing? It's gotta go three inches. We should put the battery hold down, but my opinion on that is how can it go anywhere? <laughs> you know, 
the seat's got to fall off, and at that point you got problems, right? Um, so when you hook your battery up, slide that nut under there. These look like they're maybe galvanized, and the new ones are stainless. So let's let's use the new ones. If they're just a, like a galvanized zinc type of bolt, I'd put some uh, battery protectant so you don't get corrosion on it. These cables look in good shape, so I'm not gonna worry about that. We get this open and then we'll put it together. The mighty hunter in his natural habitat, looking for its prey. <laughs> <laughs> He's something. He hears us and his tail goes up. Squirrel! Squirrel! How you doing? <laughs> He's like, maybe I should come back for a snack. He's funny. He doing, buddy. Isn't he? Yeah. <laughs> Let's ball. Come here, kitty. Can you go any faster? <laughs> <laughs> He's a good kitty. And he loves to sleep and purr, don't you? And he... You like to eat, don't you? Look at the belly. He's funny. That's funny. He's pretty loud. He sounds like a chainsaw purring. So what we're going to do, I, I slid them nuts in there, them little rectangle nuts under there, and then I put these rubber covers back on, and they hold that nut in, so maybe I'll use them. Huh. So I'll put the positive on, and i got to find the other one now. It fell down, didn't it? And this will fit down in there. Yep. I want to keep this wire down out of the way. They don't give you a lot of room, you know. We'll put our new bolt. Hopefully it'll catch. It's thicker now. I might have to, uh, yeah, see, it doesn't want to catch. They should make them a millimeter longer, right? Is it catching? Don't feel it. Maybe. Yeah, I guess it is. And then, like I said, I want to keep this down for the winch down out of the way. I think there's an inline fuse in that. Get that tight. And then, slide your cover on. No, not yet, we're gonna test it. So now we're gonna take that down in there and take our negative. Put that down in there and we'll put our our winch negative on top. I don't know, it's got a nice breeze out. It'd be nice uh, if we get an early September weather. That August is a little sticky. We were hot yesterday. Shirt was soaked. But Dawson wants to ride, so we gotta get them wheels going so he's got a you know a partner to catch up with. I don't know if he can catch this Honda though. I don't know if that 750 will keep up with this 400. Let's see if that caught that knot. Did it? Did it? Did it? Be nice. I don't feel. Get down in there. Well, I'll get a little screwdriver and lift that knot up. And get this over and then tighten that up. Super tight. I don't know if I like that pushing on that. I think I'll bring it around the other side. So I move that clip up on this side for the ground and it's away for the fuse box now. And it'll tighten when it touches it. Okay, so she's snug. Now, the next thing I want to do, we don't need this charger no more. We know it's 12.7 volts. So now we got this hooked back up here. Like I said, I want to keep this uh, little controller down out of the way of the seat. They should make this a little bit smaller for this space. This could touch this positive, but because it's on a rubber, I'm not too worried about it. But I should stretch and put that. I got to come with some kind of hook. Let's test this again, just to confirm. And if you want to know a little about my back history, is uh, back in 1984, I went to Denver Automotive and Diesel College. And um, I worked in the automotive field. So I picked up a few things. I know cars have changed a lot. Fuel injection and computers come out. 12.75 so battery is super good um, I learned quite a lot and of course cars have changed it's hard to keep up with them if you don't have a lot of schooling and so 
you know, that's where I get my mechanical from. You don't make a lot of money in the garage because a dealer wants all the money. And you got to buy all the tools. So I kind of drifted off into my second thing, which is home improvements. Um, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to turn the key on. Everything works up here. I wish it was a lot like a car where they'd say how many volts and what is charge and all this kind of thing. But what I want to do is start it up and check the charging system. Now we just saw this is 12.75. Now a charging battery, see now we're down with the key on, we're 12.64. With, with it running, it should be charging a minimum of one volt higher than the battery at stationary. So let's see what we got. Wait, I know we're at idle. Let's see if it charges good at idle. Sometimes you have to rev them up a little bit. Right now it's a low idle. And see that? We got a great charging system. What's that read, Dawson? 14.46. I can't quite see it. There we go. 14.5. So we're approximately 2 volts higher. So now if you turn the key off and look at your gauge, we're dropping down. It should go back down to the 12.75 or so again. See, it'll, it's going to take, so that tells me that this battery is taking a charge and it tells me that the charging system is good. So I think we just had a defective battery when it was 12.32 is not up to the 12.6 required. So press that start button again and we'll watch a gauge. And we're back up to 14.4. Give that a little bit of throttle while you're looking and it should go up to almost 15. some at idle it's lower and you get it a little bit more when you rev it up so and then are the headlights on i want to put a load on it i think they are don't see if they are nope huh they're not on okay put them on and then yep. see at idle it's still doing the now what I was worried is I come out this morning and I test it and and it's fully charged and I start it and it's charging and we have a draw in the system but because the battery was less than required then I feel we're fixed here and so what I want to do is just put the seat on put this cover back on Dawson's out here now so he's gonna get that bad brute, brute force out and I'll show you I can pass him. <laughs> Get the seat on there. And let's give it a little test run, boys. Hey guys, I think this is a fix. So let's go for a ride. <laughs> 